Hey folks, it's Chris, welcome back. A few nights ago I imaged the new star in the night sky, the comet C22E3ZDF. It's a long period comet coming from the Oort cloud. This is the outermost shell of our solar system. If an object gets disturbed that far away, it falls down in the solar system, coming very close to the Sun and sometimes even Earth. It was discovered by the Zwicky Transit Facility on the 2nd of March 2022. So not a long time ago. The Zwicky Transit Facility is placed at the Palomar Observatory in California and is there to observe tiny fluctuations in brightness and spot like comets, asteroids, pulsars and stuff like that. The comet had its perihelion, so the closest point to the Sun, at the 12th of January 2023, with only 1.1 AU, and 1 AU is the distance between the Sun and the Earth, so roughly within our neighborhood. And it has the closest distance to Earth at the 1st of February 2023, with only 0.28 AU, so much closer to us. At that point, it might be dimly visible to the naked eye as a smudgy point in the night sky, but only if you have perfect conditions and very, very dark skies. From the city, you won't be able to see that comet with the naked eye. You need binoculars or a small telescope to see that comet. I myself had only one night so far to image that comet and there were clouds rolling in, so the time window was very short. I used Dwarf 2, the new smart telescope of Dwarf Lab, ignoring the very small aperture of this device. But on the other hand, Dwarf 2 gives me a much greater flexibility, so I only placed Dwarf outside, run through the automated calibration settings and I manually entered the right ascension and declination angle I got from Stellarium and Dwarf pointed itself to the comet. I wanted to see whether this device is not only capable of capturing deep space objects like galaxies, nebulas and stuff, we saw that in my previous video, but I wanted to see whether this device is also capable of capturing comets. And so straight away there was a very faint smudge only to be seen on the screen but after all, we can see the comet using the Dwarf Telescope. I captured 15 second exposures at gain 60. This is my standard setup with uh, my Bortle 6 Sky outside and took something like 20 minutes of integrated exposure time. I then exported all the files from Dwarf using the uh, SD card onto my PC and use Deep Sky Stacker. I needed to tell Deep Sky Stacker that the images imported from Dwarf 2 are no grayscale images, but in fact color images. And I used a trick from Ioan from Galaxy Ars Media to convert the TIFF files of Dwarf to FITS files so that Deep Sky Stacker can better handle those files. Within Deep Sky Stacker, you first need to tell Deep Sky Stacker that you're imaging a comet. By enabling the comet right here, you can then flick through the images after registering them and select the comet in each image. If the comet is bright enough, Deep Sky Stacker will automatically recognize the comet. But if it's too dim, you need to manually click on the comet to tell Deep Sky Stacker where the nucleus is. You need to do that for all the images. And after that, you have three different stacking options. Option number one, stacking only the background stars. Using this option will result in pinpoint stars, but the comet might be smeared. You can see that by a prolonged nucleus of the comet, because the comet moves through the field of view during our observation time. The comet is really fast. The second option is to stack the images according to the movement of the comet. So you will get a sharp comet, but you will get star trails as the comet moves through the field of view, but now Deep Sky Stacker tracks the comet, the stars will obviously trail. The third option within Deep Sky Stacker is to stack the stars and then the comets and then Deep Sky Stacker will try to combine those images. This option never works for me, so I ignore that and combine the images afterwards. Then I do basic processing, stretching, curves. This is not a tutorial on processing images. The main thing is in the end I have two images, one with round stars but a smear comet and one with a tippy-toppy comet but with star trails. I then use layers to combine those two images and layer the perfect comet over the perfect stars. This way I get the most out of the data. It helped to increase the saturation of the image a bit because then you can see the greenish color of the comet. And this is really cool because Z22E3ZTF is also called the green comet of the night sky because it has a really cool greenish glow. 
Okay, and combining all the data, here's the final result. Here's the green comet C22E3ZEF captured with the Dwarf Telescope from my backyard in Bortel 6 skies for around 20 minutes. It's not a pitch perfect image, but you can use this tiny device for not only capturing deep space objects, but also for capturing comets. And I think this is pretty cool. I mean, other folks did great images like this one here or that one. And you might wonder, wait, this is a comet, it should have a tail, but I see different tails. Like, for example, in this image, you can see three different tails. And this is down to different phenomena when the comet interferes with the solar system, let's say. For example, you can see the dust lane the comet leaves behind as a trail. You can see wind and dust being blown away by the solar wind. And you can see charged particles blown away by the magnetic field of our solar system, driven by the sun. And this is so cool to see the interaction of a celestial body within the multiple factors within our solar system. So observing comets was always a big deal, even a few centuries back at the beginning of astronomy or astrophotography. And today it's still a great thing to do. So grab your binoculars, grab your telescope, grab dwarf if you have one, or any other device. Even your phone might resolve a tiny smudge in the night sky, or your DSLR on a tripod, and go out and hunt this comet if you have clear skies and good weather conditions. So right now C22E3ZTF is visible in the northern hemisphere only. It's very close to Polaris, very close to Ursa Minor and will be visible during the entire night. So no excuse, go out and hunt that comet. And if you do so, please tag me on your images, I'd love to see them. As always I say, clear skies everyone. Until next time here at Catching Photons.